In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Upon Paul, before he went to his mission, he gave us why the Incarnation. You start to study the book of the Incarnation. Let me summarize in one word, or in one minute, and then today is the ending, or we are going to finish or conclude the whole series. And our title today, this is My Beloved Son. Yes, it was said to the Lord, I need to hear it personally at the end of our talk today. You are my beloved son. And you'll hear it from the Father, and the Holy Spirit is assuring you to hear it also in your heart. The whole book of the Incarnation is about four words. I'm just summarizing what Abuna said in a few minutes. The word <coughs> nothingness, corruption, death, perishability. Again, nothingness, corruption, death, and perishability. All the creation was created out of nothing, including man. And anything was created out of nothing is corruptible. Think of anything you have, even if you build something. It will end at one point. And it will, when it will end, it will perish and it will go back to its original substance. God came and gave man something totally different. This nothingness was covered with one thing, the image and likeness of God. And he told him, if you keep the image and likeness of God, you will remain eternal, and then you will go to paradise. But to give you this special gift, or additional gift, as St. Sanchez was calling it, he told him, I will secure it with two things. A command and the place. Don't eat from this tree, and the place was paradise. So what happened? He broke the command. He w was kicked out of paradise and became in the same cycle of all other creation. He became corruptible, mortal, he died, and then back dust to dust and earth to earth. So the whole story of the incarnation is about restoring us once more, sent as Anasius called it, the additional grace. Today you have another saint of our church father, Saint Cyril, he called it the ancient good. How to restore the ancient good? We are still created out of nothing, but we need to defeat the corruptibility and mortality and not to be perishable anymore. And this is the journey that the church is leading us during the whole liturgical year, especially in this time of the, of the year when we celebrate the Nativity, and then last week we celebrated the Epiphany of our Lord Jesus Christ. So today our focus is how to restore the additional grace. According to St. Cyril, as Paul explained to you as well, when God breathed in the nostril of Adam in, the, uh, in, the, in Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, he received life and the Holy Spirit. And because of this gift, this additional grace, Grace it was in the image and likeness of God. He was able, if he want, if he choose to obey, not to be corruptible or mortal, and he will never perish. Because this additional grace has been taken away from him, he went back into the original status, corruptible, mortal, and perishable in the end. So today we'll take the journey to how to restore it. The whole incarnation of this re restoration. We'll have three quotes from St. Cyril the Great, and we'll see word for word. Unfortunately, we are not used to read a full text. We need a sentence. Today, we'll take it one word for word to understand how to read the Fathers and to see what or how it go, is going to reflect on my life. So, this is the commentary of St. John, of St. Cyril on John 1.32. When the word of God became man, he received the spirit from the Father as one of us, because he took our flesh. Not receiving oath for himself individually, for he was the giver of the spirit. And this is very important. We explain it on the Epiphany night. Why are you receiving? You are co-essential with the Holy Spirit eternally. But he said, now you lost it. I took your flesh, and I were, am able to enable you once more to receive the spirit. Why? Remember Tanib. Nothingness, corruptibility, this, and barish We lost this cover, 
So he is telling us, I am covering you, I am giving you the Holy Spirit once more to be able to resist corruptibility and mortality and not to perish anymore. So he is continuing here, St. Cyril. For he was the giver of the Spirit, but that he might be, by receiving it as a man, be reserved to our nature. So our nature was alienated from the Holy Spirit. That's why in the Old Testament, never ever the Holy Spirit dwelt in anyone. Yes, came for a mission to prophesy and leave him. And now I am in a journey, I want to end this journey, be called the Son of God. Once we lost this additional grace or the ancient good, we lost a lot. Became corruptible, mortal, and we are going to perish. So he came to restore me and you. And we'll see it in a daily life. Preserve it to our nature and might again enroot in us the grace which had left us. He called it the ancient good. Saint Asensius called it the additional or the special grace. Therefore, through himself, he receives the spirit for us. And this is one of the key words of Saint Cyril. He never ever did anything in his life, our Lord Jesus Christ, except for you in person and for me in person. We say it many times in the creed, but sometimes we are not going deeper into it. Who for us and for our for men and for our salvation, he became man. He was baptized. He was crucified. He was risen. Every single act he did it, he did it who for me and for my salvation did it as such. Therefore, through himself, he receives the spirit for us and renews to our nature the ancient good. For thus is he also said for our sakes to become poor. Why? To make you a marriage. So we were poor because we lost the Holy Spirit by the fall of Adam. Again, you'll find it clearly in the commentary of St. Cyril in John 7, 39. And now it's time of restoration. For being rich at God and lacking no good thing, he became man lacking all things. This is what you call it, kenosis. He emptied himself to show us that he is like us, except sin, of course. Then he regained to us all what we have lost in the first Adam. He became man lacking all things, while he was not in need to do it. As then being by nature life, he died in the flesh for our sakes, that he might overcome this for us and raise up our whole nature together with himself for all we were in him and in that he was made man so does he also receive the spirit for our sakes that he may sanctify our whole nature for he came not to profit himself again why he came to do everything in himself for my sake but to be to all of us the door and the beginning and way of the heavenly goods. This is in summary what he did on the day of the Epiphany. And Saint Cyril is telling us, don't see it as an event or a feast to be celebrated. It's a restoration for you in person. If you imagine, I alone, I was defeated many times in my personal struggles. Whatever your struggle, if it's a desire or lust or whatever it is, now you have a partner. This partner is God himself. In the end you hear it, the communion and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Which means, I was deserted by the Holy Spirit upon the sin of the first Adam. The last Adam restored it to, to tell me, you cannot be defeated anymore. Whatever your struggle, whatever you have done in the past, I am able to sanctify you and to make you again, with, uh, yes, create out of nothing, but receiving the ancient good, as he called it right now, or the additional grace, according to the words of Saint Athanasius. So one more thing. Saint Paul was telling us, remember, you missed it in the first Adam, but in second Adam, you can't live as it was. Unfortunately, some of us, still living in the first Adam. It's our old reality. But since we were baptized and committed our lives to Christ, we have a new reality. And here what St. Paul is telling us. It's Romans 8, 15 and 16. 
for you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear. I'm sure you heard it and you said it many times. I'm afraid of. It's not you anymore. You can't use this term anymore. I'm afraid of. Because you did not receive <coughs> the spirit of bondage again to fear. But you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba Father. That I am shy to call him Abba Father. How I can call him Abba Father? Then he was telling us, it's not your, your, your work. You received a different spirit who put you in. The name of this spirit is the spirit of adoption. The spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. I'm sure you heard it hundreds of times. You are the child of God. You are the daughter of God. Yes. But I can't feel it. He's telling me it's the Holy Spirit who is going to testify in your heart that you are the child of God. Then what I'm what I going to do? He's saying, and if children, and this is a question or exclamation in a form of a question. Are you a child of God? Yes. Here is how you behave. If children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. So he's saying, if you are real children, if the Holy Spirit is really transforming you and you accept the, your new, new reality, then if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs or co-heirs with Christ. From where we get it? By this. Yes, still we are nothing, but we have been restored, the ancient good or the additional grace. So again, let me ask myself, and please ask yourself, are you receiving the Holy Spirit in day one since you came to the church? Then every liturgy, you hear it. Every time you pray the third hour, I'm calling the Holy Spirit to come. He is the treasury of all goodness. But you can't go home the same person who came to the liturgy. You can't go home with the same person who started the prayer, and after praying the third hour or any hour, I'm still the same person. Why? Because he is a spirit of renewal. He wants to renew your life, your mind, your understanding, your circumstances, your vision. Here he is saying, and that we also, if indeed we suffer with him, then we wonder why are you bringing suffering here while you are calling us children, spirit of adoption, heirs of God, co-heirs with Christ. You are telling us you can't take part of it. But you will be able to go through it, whatever suffering you are suffering, if you believe and trust that the Holy Spirit is your companion, is your partner in this journey. That's why when we think of any martyr, if you imagine these two scenes, one of them, if you are watching the film of St. George or St. Mina, and you see him tortured, see it's you are, they are faking it. They are acting. But when we saw the martyrs of Libya, they were real. But for us, many have said, if I am in that position, I will deny Christ. I'm telling you, no. By the grace of God, you will not deny Christ. Why? Every one of them, whether acting as St. George or St. Mina or in the real scene of the martyrdom of the martyrs of Libya, there was unseen grace from inside. The camera cannot pick it up. You can see it whether it's your acting or it was real. And in the due time, the Holy Spirit will guide you and will strengthen you to do something you cannot imagine that you can do it. That's why when he is telling us, if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together based on what? On the restoration of the ancient good. The Holy Spirit will guide you. A very famous story in the church history, during the Roman Empire, it was not allowed to kill a woman who is pregnant. So they waited, she believed in Christ, so they waited until she gave birth, and then they were going to torture her and kill her. During her uh, delivery, she was struggling very much and she was screaming. So the soldiers came to her and told her, if you were not able to bear such natural pain, how come you are going to endure when you are going to torture and kill you? And she said it very plainly. This is a natural pain. The other one, I will have a grace from God. The Holy Spirit will strengthen me to have it. And she did it 
and she was able to be martyred in the name of Christ. Remember that he came to restore the ancient good in you and in me. And out of the faithfulness of our church, in day one, all of us received the full restoration. But still, I have three questions. The Bible tells us in Acts chapter 7 and verse 51, do not resist the Holy Spirit. Many of us still today resisting the Holy Spirit. And sometimes this resistance to the point that I know what is right, but I choose what is comforting me. I am ignoring God totally. Then St. Paul said it again in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 30. Not grieve the Holy Spirit. When we choose to sin, we call it small, normal sins, lying, gossiping. We grieve the Holy Spirit. He said it again, St. Paul in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 19. Not quench the Holy Spirit. When we ignore the positive side in our life to do something for the kingdom, we quench the Holy Spirit. So we all receive the restoration. It's time to be careful not to resist, not to grieve, and not to quench the Holy Spirit. One more thing. Yes, okay. The second thing is, after the restoration of the ancient good, he is asking us now if you believe that the, the ancient good has been totally restored in your life. Now there is, there is no option of having honest, unstable life. Let me share with you the quote that I am looking forward, which is, this is my beloved son. What does it mean? We have seen last week the celebration of the Epiphany, and we heard the voice, and we said it's Theophany. Theophany means the revelation of the divine. We have seen the Father speaking from heaven, the Son <coughs> in the water, and we have seen the Holy Spirit resting upon him as a dove, which is a great feast. We call it also Epiphany. Do you know what it does mean, Epiphany? It's a sudden appearance. What, the, what was sudden appearance there? In many occasions we see it as only theophany, but it's also epiphany. If something appeared was not expected by even St. John the Baptist. He said he knew that he is the Lamb of God. Yes, what else? Because the old man, the first Adam, has lost a lot. He lost his sonhood to God. The second Adam, or the last Adam, came <coughs> to restore everything for us. So what are you going to do? We heard the voice, this is my beloved son. And here is the words of St. Cyril. Are you in need, our Lord Jesus Christ, to hear it, that his, you are his beloved son? You are eternally his son. Why are you hearing these words today? And hear what he is saying. He is telling us, he said it for you and for me again. For the voice of God the Father spoke unto Christ at the time of holy baptism, as though having by him and in him accepted man upon earth to the sonship. It was my acceptance. I lost, and I was not able to tell him, Abba Father. But the Holy Spirit who came at that moment on Christ, and the voice of the Father who came at that moment on Christ was for me. Now I can call him Abba Father. That's why he received the Spirit before teaching the disciples to say, Our Father who art in heaven. Without receiving the Holy Spirit, no one. Without the Spirit of adoption, we can't call him Abba Father. So he received it, but he was one with him eternally, and he was the eternal Son of God. But now it's time that humanity will hear it. This is my beloved Son. And he continued. This is my beloved son, for he who is the son by nature and in truth and the only begotten 
when he became like unto us, what does it mean to be he became like unto us? Taking the same form of man with a fallen nature, corruptible, mortal, but he took it to renew it. Especially declared to be the son of God, not as receiving this for himself. Again, he was not in need to hear you are my beloved son. But it was my need to hear that this humanity, after receiving the Holy Spirit, the Father is calling you and calling me, you are my beloved son. Then he continued, especially declared to be the son of God, not as receiving this for himself, but for he was and is, as I said, very God, but that he might ratify the glory unto us. We lost the glory. We can't call him our father. I'm sure you said our father hundreds of times. Did you think at one point that you are able to say it because you received the Holy Spirit, the spirit of adoption in day one when you came to church and then the father pointed towards the son and said, this is my beloved son. And now in each liturgy, I'm uniting myself in him. So I can say it out loud boldly, my father or Abba father. Then he continued, for he was being made our first fruits and firstborn, second Adam, for which reason it is said that in him all things have become new. Yes, I was not able to say my father or our heavenly father. I was not able to, to say I have the ancient good. The Holy Spirit is indwelling in me and making me a new person once more. For having put off the oldness that was in Adam, all of us has this oldness. We have gained the newness that is in Christ. What does it mean? Now you have the choice. I'm sure Abuna shared with you in the first talk about the incarnation that St. Fields of Antioch was saying, God created man with the potential to be mortal or immortal. What is the key word? Through obedience or disobedience. First Adam chose disobedience. He became mortal. But when we are born from the first Adam, all of us, became only, we have only one option. You are mortal. You are going to born in corruptibility, distant to mortality. But when the second Adam came, give us the choice once more of sense of of Antioch. You have the right to choose either to be mortal or immortal through your obedience or disobedience. If you imagine every single word, every single act in your life is telling you from where you are and where you are destined. If it's obedience to the word of God, I choose in Christ immortality. Like one of the contemporaries, Eugene summarized the whole story in just a simple statement. So the first Adam came with pride led to disobedience, and disobedience led to this to mortality and being out of paradise. Second Adam came to restore it. Obedience to the death, death of the cross, Philippians uh, 2.8, which led immediately to victory over this and immortality and resurrection and ascended at the right hand of the Father. As if he is telling you, when you choose obedience as a son and as a daughter, you are restoring yourself to paradise. When you choose this obedience, you are out of paradise. If you imagine that every single word, every single text, every single phone call, it tells you where you are. Are you in paradise because you choose full obedience and you conquer this? You are able to call him Abba Father once more. You are enjoying because you can't call him Abba Father and you choose disobedience. There is something wrong. That's why when we celebrate the feast of the Epiphany, I choose to be a son because the Father is pointing to each one, each one of us and calling you and me, he is or she is my beloved son. More than that, St. John Chrysostom adding something more. I'm sure if you heard it in the Great Thursday, we have a homily by St. John Chrysostom who is telling us, God needs to say it once and it will remain eternal. And he was pointing at the time on Genesis chapter 1, verse 27. Once God created man, he told him, 
Go and multiply. He said, he said it once. Until today, people are multiplying and filling the earth. He was telling in the great Thursday, Jesus said, this is my body and this is my blood. He said it once and it will remain eternal. And he said more than that for this celebration of the epiphany. It, said, it was said once, this is my beloved son when Jesus was in the water. I said, and it remained eternal. Each and every one of us, on the day of your baptism, you heard it, you are my beloved son. Go and be the way or the source of my pleasure. Go and let your heavenly father joyful in each and every time when he sees you in obedience, restoring the ancient good in your life and refusing to go back to this old life anymore. Again, it looks like theology, but it is our life. We are not discussing only for the sake of teaching, because if we understand what we have, what we lost, what we regained in Christ, I can live properly. Because each word of this word of Saint Athanasius or Saint Cyril, it is applicable in every minute, and if not every moment in my life. It tells you, and it tells me, are you a son? Are you a daughter? Are you living in full obedience? Are you making your own laws and your own commandments? Or you are following him wholeheartedly? If you imagine in John chapter 12 and verse 50, the Lord was standing among his disciples and he said one thing, because I know that his commandments are eternal life. Then I am in paradise. I am enjoying the restoration of the ancient good that he has done for me. Let me conclude with you with one statement. We say it every time in the liturgy, either out loud or silently. We call upon the Holy Spirit. And we ask you, O Lord, our God, we, your sinful and unworthy servant, this is our reality. But there is something has changed in our life. That we worship you by the pleasure of your goodness, that your Holy Spirit descend upon us and upon these gifts. And set forth, purify them, change them, and manifest them as sanctification, you will say. Did you notice before that this prayer, the Holy Spirit in the liturgy will descend upon you before as descending on the bread and wine? Because he wants to sanctify you. He wants to be able to be united with the Son of God, his body and his blood. And again, it's not a theory of being united with Christ. It's something you, you need only to contemplate. It's a reality. That's why you'll find everything in the prayer of our Lord Jesus Christ in John chapter 17, he was telling us that they might be one. That as we are one, they will be one in us. From where? Is it just a nice word? Or are, are you exaggerating in our relationship with us? He said no. He was talking to us or praying this prayer Thursday evening. Because Thursday morning, he made the Eucharist. He instituted the Eucharist and said, from now on, you are my flesh flesh of my flesh and bone of my bones, which, which make it very real and very true. So now everything has been bestowed upon us, is telling us in each liturgy, the Holy Spirit is coming once more to fill you, not to dwell. He dwelt in day one, to fill you and sanctify you on a personal level. That's why at the very end, in the liturgy of St. Cyril as well, are you going home with the same mindset? Definitely not. With the same Bondage of sin? Definitely not. Why? Because we pray in the liturgy of St. Cyril that we are going home, that our inner man, having the purity of your son Jesus Christ, of whom we are going to commune. Do you imagine? You go home with the purity of his son Jesus Christ because you are going to be united with him. Based on what? The Holy Spirit came upon you first, then came upon the bread and wine and converted them into the true body and the true blood of Christ. Then his <clears throat> purity is infused in me and in you. When we celebrate this feast of the Epiphany, I say, this is my beloved son. It's a joy for each and every one of us. It's not about a story we heard or the theophany or epiphany. It's my restoration as a person once more. I'm not going to be corruptible, mortal, going to perish dust to dust. That's why origin 
saying something very nice in his commentary on Psalm 50. He was saying, you have seen even in many films, that when you bury someone, you say, dust to dust and earth to earth. He said, but you are not going to hear it. Because in Philippians 3.20, you are heavenly and back to heaven. Because in Philippians 3.20, he was telling us, for our citizenship is in heaven, in Christ Jesus. So again, it's about a mindset, how you perceive death. If you are heavenly, because you have been sanctified, you have, see, have been sealed by the Holy Spirit, you have conquered this through Christ, you ascended with Christ and sit at the right hand of the Father, then your mindset about this will be totally different. This will become the golden bridge that through which I can see and can restore myself into immortality once more. I have to go through it, but not as something <coughs> we hate or afraid of, but because it's a bridge to enable us to live eternally once more. I want you just this week, please think of this is my beloved son. It's your new and my new reality. If we live it in its fullness, when you say our father, remember that I was able to say it because the Holy Spirit was restored in me in the day of Bethany. I'm able to say it because Christ is uniting me with him in each and every liturgy. He did it in the great first day and it became eternal. Remember that every single word, the Lord has said it, or the Father has said in the Old Testament, it remains eternal and it's your time to claim your portion of these words of the Lord. You are my beloved son. May the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you from now and forever and ever.